G'day folks. Well, after sorting out the pile of air conditioners next to my shed, um, one of the ones that I'm keeping is this Samsung. Uh, this is going to the guy who runs the uh, scrapyard. He, uh, I think he gave it to me a while ago just to hang on to until he got his shed built up. And although his shed's uh, very big, I think he's going to have a little hangout area, a bar area, and this will be just fine fitted in the wall. And uh, yeah, keeping that area cool, at least for now. I recommended something much bigger, like a split system. I've got a couple of good split systems, but for now, you can have this one back because I just don't have room for more air conditioners. I've got other condensers and other things to get rid of anyway. So, yeah, it's been in storage for a while. I've given it a wash yesterday and gotten rid of most of the crud. Still a bit of dirt in it, but a lot of that's just oxide from sitting around. There's a bit of white oxide forming on the fins, which is a bit unfortunate, but... It all works fine. It's got a good fan on it too. It's not not underpowered. Pretty good. Thermostat in this one's dead, but I've got one out of a uh, another unit, a Kelvinator. I think it's a Kelvinator. No, that one there. This one had a cracked condenser. I topped it up with a refrigerant when I got it and used it for a while but it just got lower and lower and eventually there was none in there so the only real part I salvaged from it was my uh, piercing valve and even then being out in the weather so long I think that's even stuffed. But yeah, unfortunately some of these modern units have very very thin copper and it could have been installation error or something but there was a crack in the tube down here. You could just see oil starting to seep out, no pressure in it but it does have a good thermostat, so I'm gonna pull that out and swap it over. It's only a two-pin thermostat, no heat, con heat controls on either of them. Uh, same with the run cap, I'll keep that and the selector switch. Might just keep the whole thing together. I'll just bypass it with a 10 amp fuse, DC fuse. Low fan. Freezing cold already. Yep. If this stays frozen like this, it can mean that there's an issue. But you eventually, once you get good liquid flow, you can see the um, frost line recede and it should go back just down to beer can sweaty and the suction line will become sweaty too. But if they stay frozen or you end up with frost all the way back up the cap tube, then you're in trouble. It can also be to do with airflow through the coils and other, that, other atmospheric issues, or a cold compressor, low head pressure. But you give it time to warm up and they uh, generally come good. But it's just one of the things about the modern air conditioners, they, uh, they have an absolute minimum charge. So as you can see, it's slowly receding, but it's not very hot in here because I've already got the central AC on. I should put it outside. Yeah, see now we're condensing more liquid and it's receding. Yeah, low fan's not the best for them either. It's just quieter. Yeah, the compressor's still cold. You shouldn't be able to do that with the discharge line. It should be really hot. But you give it time to come up and warm up and like 10, 10 to 15 minutes. If it hasn't come good within 15 to 20 minutes on a like a warm day, forget it. It's probably low on refrigerant or the compressor's worn out and it's just not being able to build head pressure. You might as well uh, bin it. Of course, make sure the coils are clean first to rule out, rule out all the outside influences like dirty coils and other things. And then if it doesn't perform and it just ices up or you get a couple of strips like where the injection occurs, if that just iced up and nothing else, like this was still warm, room temperature, then you're in trouble. It could be a blocked expansion point, blocked capillary tube, failing compressor, leaky refri leaked refrigerant, lots of things. But this thing works really well. It does take a bit to come up, but that's normal. So you're sweating, 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 and just starting to work its way down here and then out through the um, suction line. So it runs up through there and down. Yeah, it's starting to sweat. Yeah, it's doing its job. Okay, that's the thermostat that I'm using. It's a generic Korean made one. Um, 
these are everywhere in various various manufacturers, same style. Uh, very handy to have, so I always grab them when I can because they're the most common ones that go out on air conditioners as well. A lot of the time you'll turn it to coldest, but you won't actually hear the click and it won't turn on. So if I turn this one, you hear the click because the bulb's warm. Now if you were to warm the bulb up in your hand and it doesn't click, it means it's probably either completely stuffed or just out of range and you can adjust them ever so slightly. I'm pretty sure it's this top screw here and try and bring it back into range but generally once they're out they're out. Uh, rarely can you actually bring it back but I believe that's the adjusting screw on top there. There's another one underneath but that probably just holds this plastic cover in. Although no, th there's two screws on it. I don't know. I've never really had to recalibrate them. I just replace them. I know Brad knows how to recalibrate them but if you've lost pressure from the little bellows that's in there, the concertina type um, accordion style bellows, um, it won't work at all because there's just probably a minuscule amount of refrigerant or something inside this bulb and as it heats up it expands and pushes on the bellows. Um, thermostats are pretty much all based on that design. You can see the little copper bellows inside there. Um, same deal, it's just based on expansion. The hotter I make it by holding onto it, the higher the pressure in the capillary tube grows and uh, pushes the bellows out. So when it cools down it contracts, the switch clicks open and opens the circuit to the compressor, turns it off. Yeah, thermostats, really cool devices, worth having. And uh, well, worth having as a hobbyist. Otherwise you're looking at electronic pressure, pressure um, sorry not pressure, temperature differential switches sort of like the solar controllers that I showed you. You need electronic control and a set of thermistors to monitor indoor and outdoor temperatures and things like that. That's what most of these split systems like the one up there and the one up there use. They um, monitor indoor and outdoor temperatures all the time. So, yep. Okay, well, as you can see, I took a little bit of a break from doing this video and some computer equipment magically appeared, but we will finish it today. I was just going to finish it off camera, but I figured we might as well finish the video and post it. People love air conditioning videos, at least a lot of people do on my channel. So, yeah, as you can see, I've gotten up to the point of having the thermostat in. Um, I, got to, I think I might have to flip it 180 because the way the, um, the mark on the knob lines up, it ends up down the bottom when the scale's across the top. So, I'll try flipping it. If not, maybe it just doesn't index the same way as the old one. But, I'll give it a try. Otherwise it doesn't really matter as long as you know sort of where the range is, you just turn it till you're comfortable. So it should work just fine now. Anyway, I'll get on with that, clean up some of this mess and put some of the boards away. And uh, yeah, I've got a couple of computers to look at today from work, so I'll be doing that. And uh, there's more stuff to sort out. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about inside the thermostat. That's the uh, pressurised bellows that expands and contracts under uh, temperature differential still got gas charge in it, probably just not enough to trigger. I probably could have recalibrated it, but that doesn't matter. I've got plenty of them. And it's just a lever in there with a real... Oh, it's actually just a sealed switch. There's no contact in this back part, but that spring has a screw through it, so you can tension it down and recalibrate it. I could almost put that back on if I straighten the housing back out. Bring it back into range. Yeah, that's the switch. Hmm. Oh, I think I broke it. Anyway, that's the uh, average small thermostat for you. Nothing too complicated. Just a single contact. And uh, temperature dependent bellows assembly essentially. running well now. It's been running for about half an hour and I've got the case and cover back onto it so it's good. And compressor cycled off because it's getting colder in here but it does work. I've got the central air running as well in the workshop so it's like 18 degrees in here when it's at almost 25-30 outside. Way overkill. 8.8 kilowatts for the central and this is about 2, 2.5. It's not huge but it helps. Anyway, on with the next job. Computers, thanks for watching.